Okay, uh, so now let's start our uh, first lab. Uh, so we all now have enrolled into this AWS Educator, and also we all have enrolled into this uh, our classroom, which is Data Analytics on AWS. So first, let's sign in to AWS Educator. And you need to sign in with the account that uh, you registered uh, for this class. So here I'm using my Gmail, so I'm going to sign in. And once we sign in, we have to go to the classroom. So that is where um, uh, we can use the classroom uh, credits. AWS Educate AWS account is where you can use your start account. So those uh, credits, so we have those 100 uh, credits each year. But for this class, let's go to my classrooms. And it takes a few seconds that to to see the entire <laughs> the list. So here you can see I have been enrolled into multiple different classes, and for different classes, they I do have different credits that have been assigned. Um, so for this class, we are talking about data analytics on AWS. Remember this uh, those credits will expire after this date, and for this class, we have this amount of credits being. Uh, assigned and if this is your first time you have to accept the invitation okay and next we can go to once we accept it and we can go to the classroom okay so let's say go to classroom and continue uh, so now we are in the classroom so where you can see the credits and that has been assigned to this uh, for this class uh, so for this class, I just gave you uh, 50 credits, which I think that is enough uh, for this one week online class. And here, let's go to the console. Again, the console will be the exact the same console for full privilege AWS account. Uh, for this class, uh, we are going to launch an EC2 instance. So this is where you can see the services. So if you expand, so there are a lot of services are available. For our class, let's just type EC2. So for this uh, lab, so the first one, virtual services in the cloud, so that is EC2. So let's click EC2 instance. And so now we go to the interface. So we can see we have no instance is running. So that is great. That's right. And uh, let's go to the instance. And let's create one. So instance, EC2 instance is the basic unit that is a virtual computer that you can launch one instance that you can do anything you like. So for example, host a website, uh, do a cloud computing, uh, train your machine learning models, or even serve as a database. So let's say we click launch instance. So for this lab, we're going to launch uh, create a website. So you may think, okay, so creating a website is super complicated, but we can use the website that have been created by someone else. So if we search the website, you can see here, uh, I, I don't have any website that I created earlier. So now we are looking for the uh, Amazon machine image. But if you go to the marketplaces and you can see here, those are some developed website that you can launch um, quickly. Uh, however, for the AWS marketplaces, <laughs> uh, they may not be free. Although they are say that they are free tire of um, available. However, so uh, you have to pay for using their uh, AMIs. But if, for this class, it's just a demo of using EC2. So let's go to the community AMIs. Uh, so for the community AMIs, so those are mostly those are free AMIs that you can use. However, so those are not um, verified. I would say so, um, so there might be some risk and also those are free. So those are just great resources that uh, share free AMIs with each other. So here, uh, let's choose something that is a. Uh, um, let's just choose this one. Okay, 
Uh, for those community AI mice, um, they change a lot. So let's choose the website AI mine. Let's select. Uh, so now we are going to launch a website based on that website image. So whatever they created. Uh, so now you are going to choose uh, the instance type. You can see uh, the T2 is free. So let's choose the T2. However, T2 is a very, very has limited power. Uh, so if you are doing something that is require a very powerful computer, you can choose the others. OK, and but those will be more expensive. OK, so depending on your need, you can choose different type of instances. So let's just choose T2 for this lab and let's review it. OK, uh, so now you can see here we are using the security group. So that is firewalls at its default one. And you can check the instance details. OK. And we didn't specify any IEM because uh, it's a public. So we don't need to specify that. And we are using the default VPC. So it is located in our default VPC. And we don't have any preference for the subnet. And also, we don't have any preference for the AZs. Uh, for the storage, so you can see we have a very small storage, so that is 8 gigabyte hard disk, so that is enough for this demo, for this lab. Uh, you can also define the tags, etc., so you can edit those tags. So tags are great way that you can organize your resources. So let's just use that as default and let's launch it. And here you can choose whether or not do you want to create a key value pair. So key pair. So key pair means that uh, you can access your instance remotely by using those key pairs. So those it's pretty much like username and also password. Uh, so however, in this case, let's choose without process without key pair because for this lab, we just want to launch it and we don't need to access uh, the server, the instance. So let's launch the instance. OK, uh, so this may take a few minutes uh, for your instance to be fully launched. So let's go to views instance. Um, and you can see right now we have the instance ID. OK, and the status is pending, so that means it's still being creating uh, in the cloud instance type. So we we use the, the, the chip one that is T2. Uh, we didn't specify any alarm. And availability zones. So so for this lab, uh, by default, we choose a Northern Virginia. So that's a region. OK. That is US East one region, and within that region, we choose one B, that is the AZ zone. Okay, and we also have the public domain and also public IP address. Okay, so normally this, uh, uh, you should not share this with others, but since this is uh, just a demo, so I'm going to show you. I, I just show my IP address and also uh, the domains. So normally you should not share this one with others unless uh, you do want to make the, the instance to be public. Uh, we didn't enable the monitoring. So however, you can also enable that if you like. So for example, you can use Google Cloud uh, to monitor the status of your instance. OK. And the security group is the one that is created by default, so that you launch wizard one, so that you firewall. Uh, so when we check this instance, we can see more details uh, here. So for example, here we see the instance ID. Again, something should be confidential, so you should not view review this one to others, especially like for the IP private IP addresses. So those private IP addresses is the IP that within your VPC. OK, so within your VPC. And uh, the public IP is open to um, to anyone. OK, and right now you can see the status. It is running. And we do have some errors here. Um, 
the error is mostly likely because that remember that we are using an educate account. So we are not using a full privilege account. So that's why that we may have some access being denied. So that's why that we have some sometimes we we all see some errors that is totally fine. You can see this platform. So we uh, we launched this one through this AMI and we are using a Linux system, which is pretty cool. OK, and also other information um, for security. We didn't specify any IM, so that's fine. And you can see that uh, for this security group, so we do open this portal. So that is 2020 at your TCP portal that allow um, uh, traffic from anywhere. OK, so that is a uh, format that allow IP address from anywhere. So basically, anyone can access this instance by using this through this portal. Uh, we go to networking and we can see, uh, so here we can see those IP addresses for public, private, and also VPC information. And storage, so we have very small hard disk attached to this one. Uh, status, so right now it is running. So you can see just after a few minutes, now it's running, that's great. And we can also uh, monitor the status. OK, and you can see the CPU uh, utilization, etc. So if someone uh, if something goes wrong, so uh, we will have a very high CPU or network usage, etc. And you can be get notified if you configure everything well. And the tags. Remember, we didn't specify any tags, so but if you did define tags and you can do that here. OK, so that is our EC2 instance. If you remember that EC2 instance is by default, it's located into our in within our VPCs. So let's now switch to our VPC. OK. Uh, so by default, we we already have one VPC. OK. And that is our VPC that uh, we by default we have that one which is available. Uh, uh, within that VPC, let's see, do we have any other subnet? Yes, we have several subnets. Okay, that is being created. Uh, if you remember that um, uh, our the instance, the EC2 instance that we just created is actually located in one of those subnet. Okay. And from here, we can also change the security groups. So uh, here you can see we do have the two security groups. So if you remember that the first security group, OK, so this is the where we can define the firewalls. That is the launch wizard one. So this security group applied to the EC2 instance that we just created. OK, you can see that. By default, that is portal 2020 that is open to the SS edge. OK, so that is our VPCs. Um, so if we want to access the website that we just launched via our EC2 instance, we have to change this security group. OK, we have to change the, the file. We have to open the portal that uh, to, other, to, to other computers. So let's edit this inbound rules. And let's add another rules. So because it's in the website, so we want to open the HTTP. OK, that is default is 80. And we want to open that one to any uh, IP address. OK, so you have to be careful about that. So this one, you can, you can add a description. So that is open to public. And we add another one. So let's say we also want to open HTTPS. OK, so there's a different portal. And we want to open one, that one to everyone. So we say open to public. Let's delete this SS edge. So we don't allow the access of SS edge. 
and let's save the rules. OK, so we just update, updated this security group. Remember, this one is attached to the EC2 instance. So basically, we just opened the, uh, the access via HTTP and also HTTPS. That is uh, open to any IP addresses. So now let's go back to our EC2 instance. So now we can see we have we do have one that is running. If we check this one, and now you can see the status. And now if we go to the which is located in our okay in our VPC, and specifically that is in this subnet. Remember we 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 saw there are several subnets that have been created by default and that in one of our subnet and now if we go to the security now you can see that we just changed the security groups in the vpc panel we can see now this website is open and this ec2 instance is open to those portal all right so now let's look at our um, website so we can see we do have the public dns so let's open that one All right, uh, so let's copy that one. So let's just copy this one and also open that one in the new uh, tag. OK, so here this is our website. OK, you see that we, we don't need any knowledge of the website. Uh, but now we just launched a website. That's that's pretty cool. So within one five minutes, we just launched a website. That's pretty nice. Although we didn't create this this website, and that is hosted in our um, EC2 instance. Uh, so if you want to submit your lab, you just need to copy this URL and also submit that one on Canvas. Okay. So finally, so when this course is over. Okay, uh, so finally, so when you're done with the lab and also uh, actually I would say when you're done with this entire class, uh, at least when you have received your, your grades for your lab one, so don't forget to delete this instance because every time when the instance is running, it will cost the, the credits that is assigned to your account, it will cost those 50 credits, so when um, at, at it, by the end of this week, so you make sure you check this instance, go to actions, oh sorry, go to instance state, you can terminate in this instance. Okay, and you choose terminate, and this instance will be stopped. Okay, and once it is stopped, it will stop costing you any money. Okay, so that can save your cost. Um, but of course, once you install, terminate your instance, the website will no longer be available. So if you now try again, uh, so uh, you will be not able to access the website. Okay, so make sure that you terminate your instance, but you terminate instance either by the end, uh, by the end of this week, or at least when you receive the, the grades of your lab.